Welcome back to the Big Red Hunters podcast. We want to start out by saying thank you to our sponsors, Big Farig Coolers. They offer coolers, cattle coolers that hold medication and vaccinations, tumblers, growlers, and dry boxes. The coolest thing about Big Frig is you can customize it, customize it all with whatever you want. Uh, check them out at bigfrig.com, and uh, if you have any questions, email at info at bigfrig. Our next one is Glory Visuals. They specialize in wedding and commercial films, so they do videography, and it's incredible. Y'all should go check them out on social media. You also can check them out on glorivisuals.com. Next up, Other Guys Outfitters. They specialize in dry field and Canada goose hunts. Uh, They run from November through February, and they've done an awesome video of Dive Bomb Industry, so you check it out. If you want to book a hunt, uh, call Crager at 308-637-7777 or check the other guys' outfitters on Facebook and Instagram. Next up is Faithful Images. This is our personal photography business. Um, You can check us out on Instagram or Facebook at Faithful Images Nebraska or our website, our website, faithfulimages.org. Next up, uh, Redbeard's Custom Calls. He runs the Timber Rattler or the Cut Down Duck Call and Crossing Guard Goose Call. Awesome calls, awesome quality. This guy's no, know, he knows what he's doing. So give uh, Andrew a call at 712-898-6989 and uh, let him know we sent you because he'll give you 10% off. Yeah, buddy. All right, next one is Chaku Peru, owned by Angelo. He specializes in big game and waterfowl hunts in the U.S., Mexico, South America, Europe, and Australia. So you can check him out at chakupuru.com or contact him at 469-999-4043. Last one up and a new sponsor to the podcast, Whitetail Taxidermy in Louisville, Nebraska. Owned by Jody Schultz. Uh, You might know him as Pappy from our YouTube. Awesome guy, and he's an award-winning taxidermist. So give him a call at... 402-630-0031. With that being said, those are our BRH podcast sponsors. We appreciate each and every one of them, and let's jump into the episode. Welcome back to another episode of the Big Red Hunters podcast. Hey, it's Hunter Didel and my wife. Shay Didel. And uh, we just want to say thank you to start off with uh, taking the time out of your day to listen to this episode. Uh, before we kind of jump in the episode, I got some amazing news. Guess what it is, babe? What? I got another uh, hunt plan. Woo! A what? Another hunt plan. A hunt plan? What's a hunt plan? Yeah. Well, I'm. Uh, my dad actually ended up getting a uh, bull elk tag. Oh, so means I'm gonna take a few days off and go out oh, west. That explains the gut wrenching, dying sound from downstairs that you're making. Well, that's a bugle. Okay, well that does not have a beautiful sound. <laughs> uh, so I've never, for the listeners, I've never learned how to elk call, and I've always seen meat eater and those guys all you know blow their bugles, and so I was like, you know what, I want to learn since we're gonna go hunting. I want to go. Uh, it's really just, it's super exciting. Uh, I want to give a little context to this. So my dad's been putting in for a tag in the same area for seven years. And where is that? <clears throat> it's a box elder unit here in Nebraska. Uh, it's not easy to get a tag. Uh, I think Jeremy and I were talking, and a guy he knew from Shields had put in like 22 times. Mm. So the way Nebraska works is every time that you put in for a tag or each year and you don't get it, you get extra points and the more points you have the more preference you had of getting in tag so most on the average people get them between year five and year 10 just depending on who Mm -hmm. you are and how lucky you are but my it's always been my dad's dream to go elk hunting right so it's really it's not only a dream for him but it's going to be a dream come true for me too just being able to go help him go shoot one go find one and do all that stuff i've never we we big game hunted when I was a kid, but ever since I really went 
to college, we have really big game hunt that much together. Mm. So having that experience again with him is going to be awesome, even if we get one or if we don't get one. Right. So I'm just excited to go out with him. How many people uh, do you think get, like, a tag? How many do they give out a year, do you know? uh, My guess is probably less than... Uh, it depends. If you're talking about all Nebraska, I'm guessing in the hundreds, maybe. Okay. But in that unit, I wouldn't say more than 50. Wow. So pretty selective. Yeah. Dang. But the nice part is, I will say that, and I was talking to my dad about it this today, actually, is the culture in Nebraska is pretty interesting when it comes to elk. Like, deer hunting is super hard to get private land. Or I shouldn't say super hard. It is hard to get private land, depending on what part of the state you are in. But elk is honestly kind of easy because farmers do not like elk in Nebraska. Mm. Uh, elk will get pretty scared, put his antlers down, and <laughs> knock over a roll, a whole roll of uh, of corn. So they're Dang. they're not very happy about them. So they're spenders. But yeah, they spend money. So I'm excited about that. That'll probably be September October era when my dad decides. Um, I'll go out there and film the whole hunt, and we'll do all that jazz. So sweet. Sounds good. Hey, babe, give me your best best impression of an elk call. Do it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm just kidding. I can't get that. Dinosaur. (laughs) I (laughs) know. I am T Rex. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. We just had to have a podcast on uh, animal sounds. All right, babe. Let's jump us into the episode. All right. So, what's up, BRH Nation? Today, we're going to talk about the seven. Early season essentials to waterfowl hunting. Um, Some of these items, honestly, you could use for other hunts, but we're really going to focus more on waterfowl today. So I'm going to read off the seven essential things one by one, and my lovely husband is going to discuss them with me. So the first one we have is, dermal please, mosquito repellent. I would have never guessed. Surprise, shoddy. But honey, what is so important about mosquito repellent? Okay, this is definitely going to be one of the comfort things. Right. Uh, mosquitoes, especially early season, September, October, are nasty. Terrible. Um, so God talking awful. about, just kind of preface this a little bit here in Nebraska, majority of what you're going to be hunting early season is going to be shallow water marshes. Right. Well, where do mosquitoes do the best at? Shallow water <laughs> marshes right. or unmoving bodies of water. So it's warm, it's wet. Perfect oh. breeding grounds for mosquitoes. Uh, Definitely during teal you, season. Do you, do you remember a couple oh, few yeah. years ago? I'm thinking it right now. So we hunted this river bottom. It, the river had basically just, it it was the Missouri back when it had flooded out. Well, it flooded in this field, and there was uh, thousands of teal out there. It was right. incredible. Right, it was so cool. Um, but the hard part was the mosquitoes. Oh. During the day, weren't too bad. I felt like a snack to them, quite so. literally. We went out in the evening time. Shay actually shot her first teal that day. Yee. So that was awesome. And I, I specifically remember this. We got done with the hunt. We kind of started picking up decoys. And I oh just heard this, like, gosh. buzzing. It sounded like a swarm of something. And I, I look over and I ask, like, uh, what is that? And he's, and he's like, uh, that was all the mosquitoes, like, getting up. And we, like, Ran. took off. And like, it was like it was every like man for herself. A swarm self. of them. I remember getting out of there and we came home and we were competing who had the most bug bites. And someone got up to like 20 something. It was so yeah. bad. I th- Actually, you got higher than that. I think I had 20 something yeah, and 30 something. Yeah, it was incredible. So learning from that experience, mosquito repellent. Um, it's important. There's, there's two different parts here. So you can actually have the spray on stuff. I to somewhat think that's effective. The hard part is... When you spray it on you and then get in the water or you get water on right. you, then it goes away. Uh, the biggest one for us is thermocells. Right. So thermocells is not only helpful in early season deer, but also early season waterfowl. What you want to do is if you have somewhat of a blind or going to, you know, this is where you're going to sit at. What you want to do is get there, get it turned on. That's one of the first things you want to do is get on and sit down and get it going because it takes a few minutes for that thermocell to really kick in. Right. That way, you know, the the time that you run in the mosquitoes the most is when between getting out of the pickup, getting decoys up, and then usually about sunrise, they're starting to kind of go away. 
So you really want to get it going early so when you sit down after your decoys, you don't get eaten alive. I'm not going to lie. I honestly like to do both. So I like the thermosel because it's this little box that basically repels like an invisible zone of protection to keep the mosquitoes out. But also I like to have it, you know, on my neck, my ears, my face, my ankles, all the places where like you wouldn't necessarily think they'd be exposed to, but they get in there. So I do both, honestly. But that's just me, so... So talking about where and when to get them or how to get them, uh, they're on Amazon for nineteen ninety nine. They're pretty relatively cheap. Right. Uh, I mean, you can get them from Walmart, Amazon, Cabela's, yeah. basically anywhere and everywhere. Uh, just look out Even for them. Target has really? them. Yeah, I see it right now. Target has them. I would say get some extra cartridges. There's the, right. the little blue piece you stick in to get them away, and then the actual like container that is like, I don't know little metal deal right. uh, i would just get extras just because the worst part <laughs> is you're like oh happy and then it goes out and you're like getting attacked that's right. worse so always have extra so but yeah i think that uh mosquito repellent is, our is a one. huge huge comfort factor all right our second one is a headlamp headlamp this is like one of my favorites because i cannot see at five in the a.m in the morning and nothing sucked more when you're like hey honey can you go set up the blind i'm like well i would love to but i cannot see and you're the only one with headlamp so the best Mm -hmm. christmas gift ever was a headlamp in my stocking so give us some deets on the headlamp honey okay headlamp the reason why it's an essential uh for starters especially if you're walking in public land you can't see crap in them unless there's you know got a good moon out you got clouds you really can't see so Trying to get the actual spot where you had scouted and figured out where ducks at. The hardest part about early season, I would say hardest part. The part about early season is you don't want to miss out on a great hunt just because you're 200 yards from where the actual ducks were because you couldn't see. Right. So having your head, having a good and a quality headlamp can make the difference between a quality hunt or a crappy hunt. Right. The second part of this is getting a quality headlamp because. There, there can be so many issues. Number one, if it's got a low battery life because the battery in it's not very good. I've right. had that happen in the past because I've bought a cheap one from like Walmart or I something. Think it was, I think it was an old Milwaukee one. Yeah. I love their tools, but their headlamp was very nice. <laughs> uh, it's also, there's two different styles. There's a flood lamp and then there's a narrow, uh, narrow flood lamp. I, got, I like the narrow ones just because you can see farther with them. Right. Me too. I've, ha- I've had so many people say to me that... You have one of the brightest headlamps that I've seen. Well, I've still had that same headlamp for, I think, three years running now. Right. And so people saying that to me still, it means that it's a quality headlamp. So the headlamp that we use is Stingray. Uh, You can find it at Stingray.com. Worth it, guys. They're $60. Uh, They send you a charger with it. Most times, I would say I get anywhere from three to four hunts out of them. When they're still, like, working in good. And then you just have to charge them, which is super easy. Yeah, you just plug them in the wall. So, right. honestly. I would say we use them every hunt, honestly. I mean, in the mornings. If I it's would say. If it's a morning hunt, we use them. Yeah. Like, even when it's a night hunt and we're packing up and it's too dark, we use them too. So, super useful I tool. use them pretty much all year long. Uh, snow goose season, Canada season, early season. That's, yeah, it's an essential. Right. So. All right, our next one, which Shay always has to use because she might ruin her gun if she doesn't, is a floating gun case. Ooh. (laughs) Ah. Ooh. All right, give us the deets. Oh, there's plenty of floating uh, gun cases. Uh, Floating gun case, everyone thinks of gun cases just to protect their gun. What people don't realize is, uh, I mean, a shallow water march, it's a little easier to keep your gun safe. Right. But this is an essential for us because it's kind of an afterthought. Uh, but I don't think it's an afterthought with somebody who has a either hunting, like, large bodies of water, uh, including, like, lakes and rivers, because if you lose that gun, it's gone. Mm-hmm. So for us, it's just super helpful to have it just in case if – it flies out of our sled or slips out of our sled because a lot of times we pack them really deep. Uh, so, in my opinion, this is essential because it saves your gun, saves a lot of maintenance on gun or issues that you might have down the road because right. you get water in them. 
Um, and also just overall, it's just safety. It's nice to be able to just an afterthought. If it does fall in, okay, it's floating. Cool. We're well, good to go. And if you have someone like me, who's five, four, I remember there's, I mean, some places where we hunt where there's water up to my belly button and I have to hold my gun over my head and I'm so terrified that I drop it in the water. And ever since we got the waterproof case, I'm like, okay, well, I mean, if it happens, it happens, but yeah. I don't feel as bad or if all, I mean, there was a situation where you need me to grab something and I just threw it on my back and it, yeah, it was floating on the water, but I knew it would be fine. So I yeah. think it was super nice to not have to really worry about water getting in there, let alone it just floats. So for us on the floating gun cases, the one I came up with, you can find them in a lot of places. I so know, many. I know Dive Bomb came out, some that are kind of cool. Uh, the ones that we have, I think shay has got a hardcore one that I bought quite a while ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one that I have is a tangle free. Yep. I do really like the tangle freeze and I'll tell you why zippers tend to have issues. Right. And so like yours has a zipper on it. It's still good, but if you're going to have water leak or have water come through and it's not going to flow, it's going to go be through the zipper. Right. So the tangle free one, actually it goes to the end and then it folds over and then you snap it. So that whole backside is completely covered Right. that way, you know, you're not going to be worrying about water getting in there. Right. And I like to slip my gun out of that. I think it, it's not such a pain, but that's just me. Right. Uh, so, Tangle Free, they do have a sale going on right now for a couple of colors uh, for $35.99. So, 36 bucks. That's really cheap. That's amazing. 36 bucks for a peace of mind. I think that's well worth it. Right. Uh, now, if you're like me... You like Sitka? <laughs> they do have Optifade <laughs> ones. Uh, they're 60, 60 bucks. So. Right, so honestly, I think it's a great investment. You know, we did a podcast. I think it was episode seven or eight. So you get what you pay for. I think a lot of these you get what you pay for. Right. And I think that's one that is a peace of mind that you should really think about investing. Right. I agree. All right, so speaking of the gear sled that you're talking about, that sometimes we pack our guns in, that's another one. So that's our fourth item. That we think is essential. So, give me some deets on the gear sled. Okay, so a gear sled looks like a mini boat, <laughs> a mini Literally. flat, mini flat bottom boat. It's plastic. Uh, the there's two there's two th- thoughts I've had on this. You've got go as big as you can. Now we carry the most gear, or it can go really small. Now my buddy Jordan from the Good Life Outdoorsman. If you're looking for some more good content, he has a lot of good fishing content, hunting content. Check out his YouTube. Uh, he actually did this like tiny one. I'm talking like, I would say like a little over a foot by a foot. It's small. He packs like maybe a dozen and a half decoys, throws his gun and his blind bag on his back. Man, that guy can go. Now, Holy cow. my jet sled, I went as big as we could just right. because that was just my thought at the time where I could try to pack as much as I can on one boat. <laughs> and we can, you know, if you have a group of three or four people, pack everything in one sled and go. I think it honestly works because I don't like I don't like to carry a lot of things. I just right. like to pull one thing. So it's nice to put my blind bag, decoys, and guns all into one sled and pull the sled. Right. Plus, I mean, in the situation where you're actually in water that's deep enough for a sled, it's actually really nice because the just water, water does most of the work. Yeah. Um, so that's just kind of the two thought process. The one that I've got is a Chappelle jet sled. You can get it from Cabela's for like 65 bucks. Yeah. There are cheaper ones. This is just something you find what you can find and make it work. Kind of yeah. Nothing real special about a jet sled. Yeah, there's a few. Cabela's, Best Pro Shop, Sportsman's Guide. There's all sorts of kinds, even Amazon. So yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. I wish it had me float in it that you can just carry me too. No? Not vibing? <laughs> okay, not vibing. Never mind. All right. <laughs> Number five, waterproof jacket. Mm. Okay. So there's there's two tactics on here. So waterproof jacket. We already talked about this a little bit, so I'm not getting into a lot. Mosquito repellent. Mosquitoes will bite through your shirt or most hoodies if they're thin. So in this situation, a waterproof jacket, they can't bite through them. So if you're really in a scenario, if you're willing to sweat, and some scenarios I have been, if you're willing to sweat, they can't bite through them, perfect jacket. Now they will get at your neck and your head and stuff, but at least they won't get your back. That's a plus. Right. <laughs> now on the actual waterproof part, 
So last season we didn't have this issue, but the year before we did, there was just a lot of somewhat rainy days or foggy days. And so you can get wet. In my opinion, I do not like to be wet um, when I'm out hunting. I mean, the other thing too about the waterproof jacket is you can actually, the one I'm thinking of, you can actually cup down where uh, it comes down at where if you put your water or your hand in the water, it actually won't go up your sleeve. Yeah, and it's I, so cool. I, I hate water. Or I hate s- sleeves that are getting, get wet. It drives me nuts because they stay wet. And all the stuff underneath it gets wet. And it's just a pain. Right. So, just a thought. Awesome. I like the Sid Cadella waiting jacket. They're three ninety nine, And we talked about this on our You Get What You Pay For podcast. Um, look for deals uh, on Facebook. I think I bought that one, if I remember right, for 150 bucks on Facebook. Mm. It was used. Yeah. Awesome. It gets Got the job it. done. So. And the funny part is the zipper went out of it. Uh, I think last year after early season, the zipper went out of it. Called up Sitka, told him what was going on, sent it in, got a new zipper. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. So, yeah. Sweet. So, that's why I like Sitka. That's why I like their de- Delta waiting jacket because you can cinch down the where your uh, where the sleeve comes down. So, that's a big plus. Again, we're not sponsored by Sitka, but we really enjoy their gear. So, so. But, yeah. All right. We're getting close to our last two. So, we have for our next one, number six, motion decoys. Hmm. So, early season. Lots of decoys, I feel like, is just essential, but motion decoys I can see being really essential. So, early season. Uh, early season motion decoys are, in my opinion, the most effective, especially teal. So, blooming teal. Uh, depends on the year, but majority of years, their kill-off ratio is 40%. What do I mean by that? 40% of their population dies each year between their migration through getting shot at and then migrating back. They're just big targets for everything. Coyotes, hawks, foxes, everything wants to eat a teal because they're small. And in my opinion, they're pretty tasty, teal poppers. So teal are, because, you know, 40% of your population that is migrating south is a first-year bird that's never seen anything that's motion or in any way moves. They don't, they've never seen decoys, so they tend to be... I wouldn't say dumb, but <laughs> they come right in when they see them. <laughs> uh, that, in that case as well, when you get into October and early season, most of those ducks are young ducks that are migrating the first time. And so in that situation, they've never really seen decoys or any of that stuff. So they're, they're more effective. Now, late season, right. I don't use them as much just because older ducks have seen stuff like that. So they know what's going on. So makes sense. Uh, in my opinion, I've... I've used both Lucky Duck and Mojo. Everybody's got their kind of way they they like to go either way, depending on what brands, kind of Ford and Chevy kind of deal. I personally like Lucky Duck. I've got a couple of them. I've had issues. They've provided great customer service. I've got, there's the Lucky Duck HD on their website's listed as 109. I get it from, I think you can get Mojo at Cabela's, and then you can get Lucky Duck at Shields. Um, they're they're really nice. I personally do not like the double A battery um, spinners because it's just a pain to have it. Double <laughs> A batteries and they only last for they say twelve or something hours, but you just don't think about it. Whereas if you have a replacement, just plug in battery, not a replacement, right. but just a rechargeable battery. You, you think just, about it every hunt. It's like, hey, I need right. to charge my spinners. So right. The next step is, for me, I personally took this step because it's a quality deal. They do have the waterproof HD, which is 219 The nice part about that is if you dump it in the water, which I have, you're covered. Right. They don't go bad. So the whole casing itself where all the electronics is is waterproof. Now, I will say I've dumped my regular HD in the water, and... <laughs> I opened it up last year because I was having a lot of issues and go to find out the circuit bro- circuit board was fried because I went in the water too. I think it had been in the wa- or dumped in the water for like five or ten minutes, mm. like five times. Oh. But you can buy a new circuit board and all that jazz. I think it was like 20 bucks. Uh, the customer service guy from Lucky Duck was fantastic. Walked me through the steps, made it easy. 
got another one ordered, got it done by the next weekend. So um, that's what I, if you're looking for motion decoys, I'd look at Lucky Duck, but Sweet. I'm not sponsored by them. Just saying that. Sweet. I like that. All right. We are down to our final one. It is snacks and hydration, which honestly you're like, well, duh. But at 5 a.m., I forget to pack snacks sometimes, or I'm like, I did not grab my water bottle. And so, Hunter, elaborate a little bit. Okay. I, I would say this is a little bit uh, narrow, over, narrow, more narrow of a scope than just snacks because everybody likes to stop the gas station and get that stuff. I'm thinking some a long-term solution that we don't think of in the future. When I'm thinking about this is something that, okay, I ran out of chips. I don't have any food. I'm starving. I'm sitting in the marsh. And it can make the difference between you staying a few more hours and being successful or having to go right there. I personally, so early season, all of this stuff is kind of geared towards having the least amount of gear so you could pull into a marsh. Uh, the fuel and hydration part for me personally, I'm going to have protein bars that are st- uh, stuck away in my gear bag. Yeah. Why? Because a lot of times you're just in a rush. You don't really think about it. Maybe you leave your crap in a bag in the back of the truck. Now you're starving. What are you going to do? For me, I've got three or four protein bars that have a lot of protein and carbs and some fat in them just to get stored away in my bag. So if I ever get in that situation, I'm starving. i got a protein bar to get me around. And I pack a couple extra because Shay. Now, the other one is water. Water is something that people don't think of in waterfowl. Crazy. But, <laughs> I mean, you could take a drink out of shallow water marshes. I wouldn't advise it just because of all the bacteria. Yeah, why in the world would you even do that? But it's something that's kind of an afterthought in a lot of times. Uh, so, you got a guy that's sitting there, he's super thirsty. In my opinion... If you plan ahead and have a water bottle, it makes a huge difference. Now, the one that I kind of pick out here is is super good. I'll t- kind of talk about why. Big Frig. Big Frig is one of our sponsors. Awesome guys. Create awesome gear. And they really thought through why they pick what they pick. Uh, so the Growler. Growler is an insulated water bottle, basically. So kind of like your... What hydro is flask. Yeah, hydro flask. So the Growlers are insulated... So that way you can put ice, water in them, and then you can actually have an ice cool drink all day long. So early it lasts season. lasts forever, y'all. Uh, early season, I put ice in them. Now, why I say that you should buy this, it's a 32 ounce, so it's nineteen ninety nine. you know. Way cheaper than Hydro Flask and yeah. just the same. Um, these things are built like tanks. Mine's got a bunch of dents in it. I've used it for two or three years all year long. So the big thing I would say about buying this is early season, okay, I'll just use a water bottle. I get that. But late season when you hit, you know, 20 Ooh. degrees or less, I I have my big frig growler for two things. One for coffee if I ever want it, or two for water. Now, if you just put tap water in there and say you just have a plastic water bottle, you know, you're going on a hunt, I'm going to go to Casey's, I'm going to get a plastic water bottle. If it's 20 degrees outside, guess what? Your bottle water bottle freezes right you don't have water what are you gonna do you can't use those plastic so if you buy the big frig for early season for either coffee or water uh then you roll until late season either coffee or water it works out it's 19.99 so i really yeah i really like your big frig one we've had that one for almost like four years now i think so yeah and it's i mean yeah it's got dents in it but you literally throw that thing everywhere and it just works like a charm, so. I literally throw it. <laughs> and I'm pretty you sure throw it's, it at me. And I'm pretty sure it's been drove over. Oh, my gosh. Really? Yeah, I accidentally drove it over with my pickup when I was snow goose hunting last year. Not surprised. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, All right. So, we have our seven early season essentials. You got your mosquito repellent, your gear sled, your motion decoys, floating gun case, headlamp, fuel hydration, um, fuelings and hydration, and then your waterproof jacket. Um, obviously, the list could go on and on. It was really hard for us to actually limit it down, um, but we really think that these are the, the most essential, especially when it's starting early seasons, warm, you're in water, and you need these few items. Just as a kind of throw out there, um, 
I don't think that a lot of people think through early season um, from a, a safety standpoint just because it's warm. I just it's, it's an, kind of an afterthought because you think you can, you know, get out there and get back and it's not going to be a problem. What I can tell you from experience is be careful, plan ahead just like you would on a negative degree hunt because you can get dehydrated. If you don't have enough food, you can just put yourself in a ginger or a dangerous situation really right. fast. So just plan ahead and just trying to throw that in there. But this is kind of where this comes from is this is our experience. You may have a different one, you may want different gear, but this is just some afterthoughts that people don't really think about too much, but we thought was essential. So right. wanna say we appreciate you guys listening to the podcast. Always. Uh, thank you so much. Next week, Jeremy and I are going to talk about uh, there's actually out in Oregon. They're trying to put a stop to hunting, and we're just going to kind of run through what exactly that looks like and uh, what that ballot proce- procedure is looking like. So if you guys are interested in that mm. and worried about it, which you should be, it's going to become more of an issue. You need to you need to decide on where you stand on it and get active. So. We appreciate you guys listening to this, and uh, have a good night, guys. Peace out.